Welcome back to another part of Paleo. When I loaded in, Delilah was just standing on my plot. So we're gonna go talk to her and see if what she wants or what quest she has or whatever. It says, hey dearies, sorry to bother you, but I was wondering if you have some spice sprouts I could borrow. I can get you some. Thank you so much. Poor Ani has had the sniffles all week. Kane was supposed to make a house call, but he didn't show up. I'm going to try to make a home remedy. Oh, uh, that doesn't sound like Kane. No, it sure doesn't. He's always been there for me and my... F for me and me family. Me and my family. I don't know if I could have gotten through Nio's labor without him. That baby's head was bigger than a ripe summer melon. Perhaps you wouldn't mind checking on Kane. I don't think he would have missed seeing Ani if he didn't have something important going on. Okay, so we are going to do the Stargazer quest. And we need to go talk to Kane. The dragon is everywhere you look. If you don't see him, don't stop looking. I hear you missed a house call. Oh yes, with Ani, I believe I let myself get distracted again. I've been reading the moon and the signals are most... What's the word I'm thinking of? Uh, concerning? I was going to say befuddling, but your perspective is rather interesting as well. Molly is telling us to listen to Ignis, the phoenix moon. And I can see that Ignis is putting on quite a show with her fire. Unfortunately, I don't know how to interpret any of it. You wouldn't happen to have any clues, would you? What is a mere mortal such as myself to do in matter of the gods? Do you need to um, ask for help? No, no, no. I wouldn't want to drag anyone else into my mess. It's bad enough you wasted your time getting me the materials for the telescope. Uh, what about the dragon shrine? How do I explain this? The voice you hear at the dragon shrine isn't the dragon speaking with you in real time. It's more of an imprint. His goodwill made manifest. A mortal mind would not be capable of understanding Maji if they spoke with him directly. So long ago, during the time of the creation, he left messages like those impressions at the shrine to explain his will. The flashes on the moon, however, show us what he's thinking now. Oh, I wish I had more time to study them, but I've already become far too derelict in my duties. Researching Ignis will have to wait until another day. After all, I can't be expected to become a scholar of ancient human religious o religion overnight. Positive change, well, find a scholar who might know about ancient human religion. Um, apparently that's Gina, because that's where it's telling me to go. Well, you settled in without much trouble. Can you believe I'm the only scholar doing her thesis on the human reemergence? Know anything about the flashes on Ignis? Flashes, you mean the volcanic eruptions? The phoenix sends signals via the volcano. Sweet. You've been talking to Cain, huh? I haven't seen anything about the volcanic eruptions having any religious significance, but if there was such a thing, it would probably be up where I found you. I have a lot of reasons to believe that area used to be an ancient human religious site. I did happen to see a human emerge there, fully formed and all. I mean, yeah. Those were easy enough to find, actually. We're gonna 
go come here real quick please Make yourself at home. Is this what you were looking for? What? Well, where did you find these? The Phoenix Shrine? This is remarkable, but I told you, you don't have to go out of your way for me. Uh, what are friends for? If you really do consider us friends, I would like you to grant me one favor. Please don't get anyone else involved in this, at least not until I have had a chance to interpret the signals on my own. Well, with that, we are going to end this part here. If you like this part, make sure you like and subscribe, and until next time.